watching a little Vice Grip Garage while I work on my own car. My favorite YouTube channel. Mm, zoom out. There we go. So this is the to-do list. I had a commenter say that in my last video I was kind of all over the place and hadn't really completed much. I don't see it that way. I completed a lot, but uh, I didn't stay in a straight line. I didn't see something, you know, anything to completion. So what I've decided to do is to kind of focus. I get excited about different things and I kind of pop around. And that's that's how I am. But but I decided for the sake of the videos to be a little more focused on what I do. So here's my to-do list today. Build a steering shaft, cut power steering hoses to length, install fittings and install hoses, uh, cut the tip off the power steering gearbox. I'll explain what that is. Make firewall plate with support heim, install clutch pedal in the car, cut down quickener bracket, remove quickener bracket welds, dash bar, fab, one quarter inch gussets for quicker bra quickener bracket, and then weld everything together. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get everything done for this video, but hopefully I'll be well on the way. All right, so I'm reclaiming some uh, AN fittings, reusable fittings for high pressure uh, um, power steering hoses. I got some old ones laying around that were donated to me by an old hobby stock racer that doesn't race anymore, and he's got spare parts that he's been giving me here and there. So I've got one more to take off, so I'm going to show you what I'm how I'm doing that. Need to get this vise bolted down to the bench here, but works for now. Mm. So it's righty tidy, lefty loosey, but opposite righty tidy so righty loosey in this situation I was just tightening it all right so I have this uh, 6 a.m. power steering hose uh, it's one of the hoses that was uh, donated to me or given to me and it's also one of the hoses I took these fittings off of. And I was looking at the hose and it, it looks like it's still good. So I put one of the fittings on and then I cut it a little bit shorter. So trimmed it up a little bit. I cut it with a hacksaw. And this uh, is tightened to the left. So this is the first time I'm doing this. So we'll see how this goes. It's supposed to seat all the way down to the shoulder. Of this it wants to move around and like I said I have to whoops sorry about the noise I have to uh, bolt this thing to the bench I have not done that It'd be much easier if I did and I'm looking down in there and it looks like it's tightened all the way down if I can bring you guys in here. All right. Whoops. Can you see in there? Right there. You can see the hose is all the way up to the shoulder. And I'm going to kind of tighten it a little bit, a little bit more just to make sure it's butted up right in there. All right. It's good. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to put the top piece in now. going to be a pain in the ass like I said because this thing's moving around all right put this thing down in there and the threads will catch and then you just tighten it up
No, stay where you're at. So that's in there. That's good, I think. All right, this is the hose I'm reusing. It's got a little tiny bit of surface wear right here. So I'm hoping it's still good. We'll find out when it's under pressure and if it blows up. It's not going to blow up. Just springs a leak, you know. I'll probably zip tie it or clamp it right here. I still got to get, I got this fitting here that's coming from there and it's going to be going up to the pump here uh, underneath. Oh, there's the AN6 fitting underneath here. And then this is AN10 and this will be going, I uh, can't see through the camera, right here. So I'm waiting on those fittings. I still need to get AN10 hose. So that might be a little while before I do that. I need to get some more AN6 hose, like I said, from here to the reservoir. And uh, we'll have the steering all tied up once we do that. Um, in the last video, I was uh, showing you that I was modifying the collapsible section uh, of the steering shaft out of the donor car. But I decided so that uh, just to make sure that the, the collapsible section um, actually collapses as it's supposed to, I didn't know how rusted or whatever the last one was. I didn't know how well it was going to work. Plus, it only had like a five to five and a half inch collapse section. This is seven and a half inch. This is a Borgeson collapsible section. It's pinned. So it's not, it's not collapsible as far as they have, they sell some where this kind of slides in and out or, you know, freely. This one's pinned in place, but it's got a seven and a half inch collapsible section on it. It's three quarter inch double D or I'm sorry, one inch double D and three quarter inch double D. Um, I've already started working on this. As a matter of fact, I pulled it back apart just to show it off. So I've already put in some divots in here which didn't go exactly as planned because as you can see on this one it walked on me this one walked so I had to make a new one on the other side same thing over here this one's good I probably need to make it a little bit deeper this one on the other hand so it's got a long it's got a long piece that you have to that drives all the way through it I had to cut it shorter because it was hitting the cross member but anyways, this thing walked on me like a mother. So it's a little lopsided. This kind of sits up against that, you know, when it's all said and done. But I don't like all that. Hopefully it didn't make it too weak. I think it's still good. But anyhow, this is what I got. I got a U-joint, uh, a Borgeson U-joint. It's uh, uh, 1316... I think it's 1316, 36 spline or whatever, whatever the older GM boxes are. And then it's a one inch double D. I got a coupler for the middle, which is three quarter inch double D to three quarter inch round. Now the three quarter inch round part all the way up to this was off of another vehicle. So I'm just reusing this part. I need to weld it here. I didn't want to take this off because it's already in the perfect spot. I already had it fitted in the car and everything. But I didn't want to have to redo this. It's I kind of have it marked here, but it's ready to be welded. One of the other reasons why I decided to get all new components is even though Borgeson, the last... Let me grab it real quick. So this is three-quarter inch smooth by three-quarter inch smooth. I got this one at um, Performance Bodies, but it's also made by... Oh, this is a sweet manufacturer. It's only 50 bucks. This thing is like nine, 80 bucks, I think. 80 bucks, 90 bucks. But anyways, the reason why I decided not to go with this is because on the Borgeson website, or was it on the Sweet website? I couldn't remember. The reason why the Double D is the more popular, sorry if I'm moving this camera around too quickly. The reason why the Double D is more popular is because you don't have to weld this. You basically, you basically drill the divot in here so that the set screw will sit in it. You put some thread locker and another... Uh, a, a nut on here to kind of lock it in place and the reason why is because they say that when you weld these the heat can actually mess up the mess up the uh, the u-joint part whatever that's called 
there's little needles or something in there, I guess the heat can crack it and it just causes problems. So they don't recommend welding these. Well, that's the only way to get this on here. But the other piece I have is this support heim for the firewall. And that's so, according to Dirt Race Life, I think, he was saying that while you're turning the steering wheel, the middle of the uh, steering shaft might want to flex on you and move around and it can cause some rough spots. So this kind of supports the middle so it doesn't flex on you and move around. All right, so when you're, when you're putting a uh, steering shaft together, you have to phase uh, the U-joints correctly. So I did my best to try to find the center uh, and to follow that center all the way down the steering shaft to the coupler. Um, I did the same thing on this side where I basically found, tried to find the center. You can probably see the pencil mark there. And then did my best to follow a straight uh, line to try to make sure I had the center of the, of the steering shaft so I'd meet the center of the rest of the shaft. That way, uh, that way it's phased correctly. The U-joints are phased correctly. So this is facing out that way and the other U-joint has to be facing the opposite direction, but lined up. So I think this is correct. So now I set the, um, I cannot see what I'm doing. I set the uh, set screws in there, in the, uh, in the divots, and hopefully everything's correct. So now what I need to do is take this back apart, and then um, I'm wanting to use this. That way the center of the steering shaft doesn't flex while I'm steering. I'm going to be cutting this uh, nipple thing off because it's getting in the way of the U-joint. Trying to fit this so that it fits flush in that uh, center piece here, or that groove I should say. So the set screw sits in that groove and this nipple thing is, uh, is getting in the way. And I looked up some of the uh, steering boxes they had on Speedway and they, none of them have this. And I talked to a friend of mine who's helping me with this, and he said, yeah, just cut that damn thing off. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to be using this Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel. I could use um, I could use my angle grinder, but I'm too lazy to take the box off right now. If this doesn't work, I'll take the box off and use the angle grinder. All right, so that worked. That worked perfectly. The Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel cut right through it. It seemed like it was soft steel, so... Use a grinder on it, kind of smoothed it out a little bit. You gonna focus there, buddy? There you go. So, done. Okay, so I started the work already on cutting the, um, let me get a better angle here. Cutting the uh, steering quickener bracket. I had to use, I tried to use an angle grinder, a Dremel tool, a jigsaw. Let me get this light out of the way real quick. Um, and it just it was a pain in the ass just because of the angles and I was really worried about cutting the dash bar here So what I ended up doing is clamping a couple of uh, Brake brackets I clamped without the uh, steering quickener on of course I clamped a couple of these To the top here somehow I think like this Just to bring the level up and I used a reciprocating saw on it especially with a heavy metal This is a quarter inch heavy metal blade cutting blade it went through here like you know, hot knife through butter. So, um, so that's all cut off. So now I'm just working on slowly getting the welds and the gusset welds off or the old gussets off. I'm still see what I'm working with over here, using the grinder for that. And when, when I'm getting a little bit, when I get a little bit closer to the dash bar, I'm going to be using the Dremel tool. I don't want to thin out the dash bar or damage the dash bar in any way, but I will be fabricating some quarter inch gussets to uh, weld under here just to reinforce this because it originally had quarter inch gussets this is one of the things that was cut off this was the gusset of course it was longer but this was the gusset that was underneath it that's the edge that i cut off the side that i cut off but this is a quarter inch gusset they use underneath it just to reinforce it so i think i'll have i'll fabricate those up and i'll have those welded on just to make sure this is nice and strong and then i will be using this and i've tried putting this on here with one hand before didn't work so well maybe with that it'll work a little better it'll be something like this and let's 
giving me shit again. It's giving me a trouble. Give me a trouble. All right. It'll be like that. I'm going to remove a little bit of material. That's why I'm using those uh, socket cap screws that you use an Allen wrench on because I don't have to remove as much material. It's going to be a lot easier to get them out with just a Allen wrench or whatever. So, plus I think these are made stronger than like, these are stronger than grade eight, I think, or at least there. But I think it'll be easier to take the quickener off if I need to. And just like I said, I'll just remove a little bit of material. Stay up here for me. A little material from here on either side just to be able to get these out. All right, got some AQP high pressure power uh, steering hose that was recommended by KRC. I bought it at the KRC website. They sell it by the foot, which is a pretty good deal because I only needed about three foot of each, maybe. Probably not even that. These are actually kind of a bit longer, so it's cheaper than buying the six foot spools that they uh, that they offer pre cut. So anyways, got some fittings for it. I got two of these. Sorry for the noise. I got two of these AN10 fittings. Uh, these are reusable fittings. And I had some uh, AN6 fittings that came off of some hoses that were donated to me. So I'm going to reuse these. Like I said, they're all reusable. So I took the, this off some old power steering hose. I'm going to reuse it. I'm going to cut these to length and I'm going to reuse it for that. All right, I got my AN6 hoses and my AN10 hose cut. The fittings attached. And... The hoses ran and installed. Now I gotta figure out, this might be a temporary installa installation because I gotta figure out if I gotta use like um, some of that thread tape or whatever they use, like plumbers use. I seen some of that on another reservoir I had. So I gotta see if they got if they use that so to pre prevent it from leaking. But if I do, I'll just um, take those off and uh, reattach them. Okay, so I'm gonna be installing this Willwood uh, floor mounted clutch pedal. And uh, I've made a template of the bottom of the clutch pedal. I'm going to be mounting it down here. At least that's the idea. So I got it kind of lined up. You can see where I've traced it uh, with a marker to uh, kind of tell me how I want it oriented in there. So now I'm going to try to mark these holes uh, for the floor pan and uh, drill them out. Floor pan is drilled. Now I'm going to be putting this down in here and bolting it in and hoping everything uh, works out correctly. But before I do that, on the Speedway Motors uh, website, if I remember, if I read it correctly, they recommended, so in order to get a 4AN um, line from the throwout bearing, uh, to the clutch master cylinder You got to buy this adapter here At least that's what I did. This is what came in the uh, clutch master cylinder, which is right here Hold on. Let me get this together All right, so here's it this this uh, brass looking uh, Fitting here came with the master cylinder. This was an adapter for the line that I have the braided 4AN line that I have. Now they recommend using a Stato seal. And so I ordered a, a Stato seal. I think I ordered it on Amazon, I think. I ordered the uh, 716 size, which I believe is for uh, 4AN. But for the life of me, I cannot figure out where this is supposed to go. Does it go here? That would make the most sense, huh, with the line. I'm guessing it goes there, or does it go here? But the problem is, it's kind of loose in there. I don't think it goes here, because this didn't come with any type of thing. So I'm assuming it goes here. I have to do a little research. That's where it fits, kind of. So just to test it out, I put the Stato seal on, and then I put the 4AN line on, and it's loose so I don't know what that's about I'm gonna have to do a little research and I'll be back okay back to that subject I forgot see I have a book here with a bunch of instructions from different uh, manufacturers that I've printed off because I like to have it all in one place I know we got the modern technology that I can just look these things up but sometimes I forget where to look or don't think about it so when I find something I print it off, 
that way it's all in one place. I'm old fashioned. I'm kind of I'm kind of old anyway, so I guess this makes sense. But anyways, Performance Bodies has a instruction sheet for um, installing the How 82870 um, throwout bearing, which is what I have. Here's the box. It's installed in the car right now, but this is what I have, 82870. So they have instructions on it, and it says for number four line, which is what I have, um, Attach the other end to your master cylinder. If you have a Willwood master cylinder part, 260-1304, which I do not have, but I have the Speedway Motors version, which is, to my knowledge, exactly the same. Um, you will need to get fitting 40301 to screw into the existing fitting in the master cylinder. Then your braided line uh, will screw right into that fitting. So, um, hang on. So this is the horrible example that they give you. There's the Willwood master cylinder, which is a clutch master cylinder, which, like I said, is the is what I have. I have the Speedway Motors version. So what they have is exactly what I have here. Um, that there being this, and this here being that. And I don't see any stato seals or anything to seal this off. And they don't mention it in the direction. So I'm not sure what Speedway Motors was talking about as far as the Stato seal. I have them here just in case, but I don't think I'm going to be using them. I think they just tighten down, and I think it's good. We'll find out if it starts leaking in my uh, cockpit there. All right. Since I don't have anybody here helping me, I'm going to let the car be my, be my wingman. The Allen wrench thingy majig fits in the screw is held there and will... Be held there by the clutch pedal itself while I tighten the, the bolts. I'll do the same thing on the front here, but this is what I got so far. So I'm going to tighten this down and then I'll put the uh, clutch master cylinder in. All right, the clutch pedal um, came with these bolts to uh, to use the bolt through the floor pan or whatever you're bolting it to. Came with these little tiny uh, washers, which I'm going to use them on the top, but on the bottom, kind of spread the load. A little bit on the floor pan. I'm going to use these larger grade eight um, washers just to give it a little bit more strength under there. All right, as you see, the bolts are in, secured. Now, the little trick with the Allen wrench in the top being held by the by the pedal, eh, it worked, but the Allen wrench has kind of got stuck in there, and the one I had up front kind of got stuck to the side. You can kind of see where it. Took a little bit of paint off, so I suggest getting someone to help you and hold a wrench up top or something. That way you don't have to do do that, but anyways, it worked. So now I'm going to put the master cylinder on the back. Okay, everything's bolted in. I've got the uh, braided line coming in through the firewall. It's just a temporary deal. Uh, I'm going to try to mount it up probably a little bit lower. Um, but yeah, it's all bolted in. It's ready to go. Now, I'm still thinking I might need to add a plate underneath uh, the instructions say to have it you know it's it is, uh, have a sturdy mount for it that way it doesn't deflect so we'll have to check that out and uh, if i have to i'll make a, a bracket un for underneath the fire uh, the floor pan and have it welded in but yep that's that's all done and it lines up with the other pedals pretty pretty well i like it anyhow so, <clears throat> got the shaft in, got it all built, got the hoses done. I think they're set up correctly, all the way to the firewall, to the re um, remote reservoir. Yeah, pretty much completed most of what I wanted to for now. All right, so best part of the day, we can check some, some stuff off. So, built the steering shaft, cut power steering hoses, put the fittings on. Uh, did this the firewall plate was already made, but I assembled it all. Uh, installed the clutch pedal, started to cut down the uh quickener bracket. Need still need to finish removing the welds, make the gussets, and all the rest of that weld everything together. But I think we did pretty good, so the rest of it will have to come later. Hopefully, I'll have another video here soon doing some more of this stuff. I'll probably make another list uh, for us to complete. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.